Privit. I'm Chuck Olenek. I'm a Ukrainian-American who was baptized with the name Yaroslav, which is also the name that I use in the historical reenactment group, the Society for Creative Anachronism. All my life I've been immersed in Slavic culture and Ukrainian culture in particular, and that got me interested in the folklore and mythology, which was interesting to try to sort out. And what I decided to do with the information in a stack of notebooks that's really tall and really thick is to put this to use by putting together videos about the subject and posting them on my YouTube channel, which by the way, if you subscribe to it, that'd be like really, really cool. Um, and this might spark interest for some people in the subject and maybe they would end up digging deeper into the lore. So I've been retelling tales of the Bogatiri, of the heroes. And there's always like the big three that everyone sees in this famous painting of Ilya Merom and Dobrina Nikitic and Alyosha Popovich. And um, this is one of those tales about those three. The thing that's odd about it is sometimes this is only considered a part of a different story because this is basically a, about Dobrina and Alyosha and their friendship, which will ultimately end badly in a later tale. So I'm just telling this as a separate part. Who would tell us of the things of old, of the things of old and of the things that have been, of Dobrynya, the son of Nikita, of the brave bogatir, Dobrynya Nikitich, and of the adventure of the pavilion? As young Dobrynya Nikitich roamed the open plain on a day, he came to a damp oak, whereon sat a black raven. Dobrynya drew his bow from its case, fitted to the cord and flaming arrow, and made ready to shoot the raven. But the raven addressed him in human language. Now I, Dobrynya Nikitich, slay me not, and I will reveal all things to thee. The children in the streets have a proverb, in killing a graybeard there is no salvation, and none shall receive profit from shooting a raven. With the blue plumes of a raven may no man solace himself, and my flesh thou canst not eat. Half the raven's wings were white, and he said, I, Dobrynya Nikitich, go thou to the lofty mountain, for there be three wondrous marvels, three marvelous damsels. The first is a wonder of white whiteness, the second of redly beautiful, the third a black marvel of darkness. Dobrynya reflected then in haste and replied to the raven, What thou hast said of the old man, the graybeard, and of the raven is true. Then he put aside his dart and thought, Better is it that I should go to the lofty mountain, to yon steep hill, and see these three wondrous marvels, these three marvelous damsels. So he turned his good steed in haste, quickly, quickly, very, very quickly, and with speed, and rode to that lofty mountain. And as he gazed about him, lo, there stood a pavilion of white linen. On the pavilion was a lock of steel, and upon the lock this writing, Whoso entereth this pavilion shall not issue thence alive. Dobrynya's heroic heart burned within him when he read that, and he smote the lock with his fist, so that the lock fell upon the damp earth. Within the pavilion he beheld tables set with viands thereon, and he entered. Much as the youth ate and drank, even more did he fling upon the ground, pour out and trample underfoot. Then the youth lay down to sleep, and as he slept and took his ease, he knew not of the peril hanging over him. From afar on the open plain came Alyosha Popovich riding, who gazed upon the sight within his pavilion. 
more had been cast down, poured out, and trampled underfoot than had been eaten. Then was Alyosha very wroth, and his heroic heart burned within him. He grasped his sharp pointed spear and would have pierced Dobrynya's white breast, but he reflected, No honor shall I win, nor youthful praise, if I slay a sleeping man who is no better than a dead one. Rather will I mount Dobrynya's good steed and fight and contend with this Dobrynya on his own good steed. So Alyosha mounted and smote Dobrynya with the butt end of his spear. Thereupon the hero awakened from his sleep and sprang quickly forth in his fine white shirt without a girdle and without his shoes, grasped his heroic mace, and the two began to fight. Dobrynya leaped about on foot, but Alyosha rode Dobrynya's good steed. All day they contended, eating nothing. All day they fought, drinking nothing. Two more days and nights they fought. Then came a clap of thunder, and moist Mother Earth began to quiver. When Ilya of Murom, the old Cossack, heard that, he pondered, "'Tis heroes of Kiev, Bogatiri, in battle. Where contend they now, and fight? In haste he saddled his good steed Cloudfall. When Ilya came at last to the lofty mountain, he beheld young Dobrynya Nikitich and bold Alyosha Popovich in combat. Then he seized young Dobrynya in his right hand and bold Alyosha Popovich in his left and shouted at the top of his voice, Why contend ye, mighty Bogatiri? Alyosha answered, I, old Kozak, Ilya of Merom, how could I refrain from fighting? As I had tables arranged in my pavilion, I have all the dishes laid out, viands set thereon, and this Dobrina Nikitich cast to the earth and trampled underfoot as much as he ate and drank, so I was ashamed for this youth. I thank thee. Alyosha Popovich, spoke Ilya, for your worth and for defending thine own. And to Dobrynya he said, And thou, Dobrynya Nikitich, my cross-brother in arms, why contendest thou? Ilya Merom, my brother in arms, my cross-brother, old Kozak, how was it possible not to fight? For this dog and robber had a lying inscription written, Whosoever entereth this pavilion shall not issue thence alive, and I desired to remain alive. I thank thee, Dobrynya, quoth the old Kozak, for that thou hast entered boldly into the dwelling of a stranger. And yet more did little Ilyusha say, Calm now your heroic hearts, Tame the heart of heroes, and call each other brother in arms. Swear brotherhood with the exchanging of crosses. Then Ilya, flattered and persuaded the two Bogatiri, and they decided not to fight and contend, but swore their brotherhood on the cross. Dobrina called himself the elder brother, Alyosha, called himself the younger, and so they parted and came at last to Kiev town. But alas, this sworn brotherhood would not last, which is a tale for another day. It was at the feast I heard this tale, there it was I drank me ale. Though it flowed down my beard, my mouth stayed dry, for never a drop passed my lips where I.